everybody. For this tutorial, I will be using four different hooks. This is optional. I do suggest, because it is a larger project, um, I do suggest using a J hook for the skirt part. But I do like to use a smaller hook for the, for the, um, for the upper portion, the breast part. So this one is a G hook. And in order to transition between the two hooks, I'm going to use at some point, just for one row, I'm going to use an H hook and then I'm going to use an I hook um, just so I can transition to get to this one because sometimes the hooks won't fit into, I mean, if you jump that far, it won't fit into the smaller stitches from the smaller hook. Um, and then I'm going to be using Karen Simply Soft in the color Ocean. It is a size, a medium weight for yarn. And then I'm also going to use a measuring tape and a pair of scissors, of course. And I just want to talk about, you really only need a few measurements here. Um, this is my little sketchbook. <laughs> but... I'm measuring from my natural waist, which is where the top part of the skirt portion is going to begin, and then how far down I'm comfortable with my slit being. So for me that was 15 inches. I mean if you want to, this is somewhat conservative, but not very conservative, but if you want it up a little higher, that's fine. It's up to you. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my G hook. Um, if you don't want to start off and do all those transitions between the hooks, you can just start with the J hook if you like. Um, but go ahead and make your slip knot. Okay. And I'm going to make a chain of about, and this is for all the sizes so far. I'm going to make just a few chains, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So once I just make a couple, I'm going to remove my hook from my working chain and then I'm going to, you can see on the back side here, the bumps and then you see on the front side is um, more like V's so you have V's and then you have the bumps on the back I'm going to reinsert my hook on the bump from the bumpy side into that first stitch that I made okay then I'm going to reattach this working yarn so all of the V's are on the inside and this will keep our long chain from getting twisted because that is a very big problem. So anyway, um, so for a size, uh, let's see, for a size small through large, you can go ahead and make a chain of 140 to 150 chains. If you're on the smaller side, make one, 140. If you're on the larger side, make 150. Okay. And if, for a size, let's see, for a size 1X to 3X, I would recommend um, 180 change, chains to 190. So uh, just if you're on the larger side, make the 190. You can always go bigger because this dress is adjustable. Um, it'll fit multiple sizes, but those are my recommendations for the sizes. So after you have uh, a few chains and you've properly um, done this step just go ahead and finish out making your chains and it'll make sure that this long chain does not get twisted as we you know as we slip stitch it later okay so go ahead and finish your chains and I'll see you after that so once you have your chain uh, made and both sides should be on your both uh, your beginning chain, your beginning 
chain is on your hook and then your um, working chain is on your hook. From there, go ahead and yarn over and slip stitch through both chains like that. And then your chain should not be twisted at all. Okay, from there, go ahead and chain one. And then we're going to go along this chain with single crochets. And that's a little, okay. So, depending on how many chains that you made, that's how many chains that you would like to have in this row. Um, but again, don't stress out too much because this dress is very forgiving, okay? So, just go ahead and insert your hook into the next chain space, pull up a loop, yarn over, and single crochet. Insert into the next chain space, pull up a loop, and single crochet. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and finish this row with single crochets. And I will show you what's after that. So I have about two single crochets left here. One. And two. And once you get back to the beginning, go ahead and slip stitch into your, oh, there we go into your first single crochet, not your chain one. Okay, go ahead and slip stitch. And from here, I'm gonna pull my yarn up a little bit so that I can switch hooks. So I'm gonna move on up to my H hook now, my five millimeter hook. And from here, I'm gonna go ahead and chain one. And then I'm going to begin single crochets with this H hook, and I'm going to start in that very first space where we uh, where we slip stitched, and I'm just going to go around with single crochets with the H hook. Okay, so go ahead and do the same thing. Finish finish this round and then I'll show you what to do after that okay so I just have a few single crochets left one and two and then I'm gonna go ahead and slip stitch into our first single crochet and I'm gonna pull this out a little bit because now I'm gonna switch to my eye hook I, yes, I hook and I'm gonna go ahead and start um, single crocheting in this very first space here and I'm gonna do one more round of single crochets with the I hook and then we'll be ready for our main hook the J hook after this round again if you just wanted to start off with the um, J hook from the beginning that's just fine so I will finish this row and then I'll show you what to do after that all right so I have let's see I just have two stitches left and I'm gonna go ahead and single crochet into those and then slip stitch in our very first single crochet okay from there I'm gonna switch hooks one more time and now we're on our ultimate hook the J hook that's the one that we're primarily gonna use for this skirt all right so the first thing we're gonna do is make a faux double treble crochet so what I'm gonna do next is chain one and I'm going to yarn over and do a double crochet into this same chain space as my slip stitch. The very next chain space available. So I'm going to go ahead in there and make a double crochet. 
Okay, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. If we can, there we go. And yarn over, pull through two. So I'll do that one more time. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now we have a double crochet here, but I want to make this double crochet uh, the same height as a double treble crochet. So I'm going to just chain one more. So that is my faux double treble crochet and it looks so much better to me than a chain three. All right, so from here what I'm gonna do is yarn over twice to prepare for the double treble crochet and insert my hook into the next chain space and pull up a loop. Now I have four loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And that is a double treble crochet. So again, yarn over twice. Insert your hook into the next chain space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so yarn over twice, insert your hook into the next chain space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, and so we are going to do double treble crochets for the this entire row and I'll meet you back here and show you how to finish off this row. Okay, so I have one more double treble crochet left. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then from here, um, I'm going to go to this first faux double, cro double treble crochet and I'm going to go into this chain one, not into the double crochet part, but into that chain one, I'm going to pull up both loops, the front loop, it's a little bit tight, and the back loop there. If you get both loops, it's just a little more sturdy. There we go. And once I get both of those on my hook, I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch to finish this row. Okay. So from here, what I'm going to do next is go ahead and chain one and turn my work. Now the reason why I'm turning my work is because um, if you don't, your seam will go crooked with this tall, very tall stitch, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do one more row of double treble crochets. So I've already chained one, and I'm going to start off with that faux double treble crochet by making a double crochet first and going to that very first available chain space and pull up a loop and then yarn over and double crochet and then add a chain one after that okay and this row is similar to the row before we're going to do double treble crochets all the way around except in this row we're going to begin our increases so we need five increases in this row, a total of five. So we're going to spread them out through the perimeter. Don't put them all together. They don't have to be perfectly spread it out, but just try to space them out along the entire perimeter. So go ahead. I'm going to do one with you here. Go ahead and yarn over twice and then insert your hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then we're going to yarn over twice and insert into the same chain space. Pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. So that is our first deep uh, increase. So I'm just going to keep going around with um, 
double treble crochets and you can use a stitch marker if you like to see where you want to put your increases but I'm just gonna go with it and put four more increases around the perimeter and then I'll show you what's after that. Okay, so I have one double treble crochet left. And then I'm going to again find that, that chain one on top of the double crochet and go through both loops if possible and then I'm gonna go ahead and slip stitch okay from here I'm gonna chain one and turn my work all right and I just want to point out that this front side that we started off on that's gonna remain the front side and um, you'll be able to tell which side is the front as you keep going. Anyway, this row is going to be all single crochets. So it's single crochets all the way around with no increases. It's a pretty simple row. And that's all we're doing for this row and I'll show you what's next. All right, so I have one more single crochet left in this row. And remember, we did not do any increases in this row. And then I'm gonna go ahead and slip stitch into my first single crochet of this row. From here, so remember that this is the front side. From here, I'm gonna chain one and turn my work. And this row is going to be um, double crochets, but they're going to be front loop only double crochets. Um, the reason why this side, this is the inside and this is the front. So I want to do front loop only double crochets so that I get a little nice ridge in the front. And it's just purely for decorative reasons. So go ahead, um, we are already chained one, go ahead and yarn over and go into the first available chain space, the next available chain space, and we're going to do front loop only. So you'll see like there's a V, There normally we do two loops, we're just going to pull up that front loop. So yarn over and insert your hook into just the front loop. This one is a little tight because it's with the slip stitch. Okay, so go ahead and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. All right, so we're going to continue that. It looks like I missed one. Let's see. Look like my yarn split there. Front loop only. There we go. Okay. So yeah, we're going to go through the front loops only for this entire row. Instead of both loops. And we're just doing double crochets. So that kind of gives you that little ridge. I know it looks really small right now, but once this gets bigger, I'll show you a picture. Um, once it gets bigger, it's going to create like this stripe effect. Okay. So the second thing we're doing in this row is we're going to just like uh, this double treble crochet row, we're going to do five more increases. So when you do your increase in this row, just go ahead and put your second double crochet into the front loop only. So then you have two, two double crochets front loop only in the same, um, in the same chain space. So we're going to be doing five increases in this row 
and I will meet you back at the beginning of this row. All right, so I have one more front loop only double crochet and I've done my five increases. And then I'm going to insert my hook into that first double crochet of this row and slip stitch. All right, from here I'm gonna chain one and turn my work. So now we are back on the front side. And to finish my little stripe, I'm gonna do another row of single crochets. But this row of single crochets is going to be back loop only. So we already chained one and I'm going to find that first, first uh, stitch there and go into the back loop only and do a single crochet. If I can get to it. There we go. And, oh, I missed it. That was my chain, sorry guys. Back loop, single crochet. Why do I always have trouble on my first one? Okay, chain one. So this row is going to be all back loop only single crochets and there will be no increases in this row. So basically from here on out all rows are going to have five increases except for any rows with single crochets. So go ahead and finish out this row and I will show you what's coming up next. All right, so I have one more back loop single crochet left. And then I'm gonna go ahead and slip stitch into the first single crochet of this row. Okay, so from here, this pattern is pretty simple. It's going to repeat. Um, when you come to these rows with either the front loop or the back loop, just pay attention and make sure that you leave the loop out on the front side so it might be different as you come up on these rows. So just make sure you're doing it on the side that leaves this loop out on the front side of the garment. But basically, it's going to repeat. We're doing two rows of double treble crochets with five increases in those rows. And then one row of regular single crochets, no increase. One row of either front or back loop only, depending on what side you're on, like which way your thing is facing. Uh, one row of double crochets, front loop or back loop only with five increases. And then one row of single crochets without increases. And this row also is front loop or back loop only depending on what side you're on. So from here, I'm going to chain one and turn my work. And I'll get started on my faux double treble crochet for my first stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook into both loops. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then chain one more. And then you can get back to repeating this pattern. So we're gonna repeat this pattern until we reach our uh, measurement that we took in the beginning. So mine was 15 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and continue this pattern until I'm ready to start my slit on my skirt. 
So I will meet you there and show you what to do after that. Okay, so I finished um, all my rows up into the point where I want to begin my slit. And I changed mines from 15 inches. I'm doing, I'm doing like more like 13 and a half inches. So wherever you want your slit to start, you're going to start a new step. So all the rows are going to be the same, the pattern. So stay in line with the pattern. Wherever you left off, that's where you're going to start. So I'm starting with my first double treble row. So what I have to do is the same, just chain one and then turn your work. And then start your row like normal. So I'm going to do my... Um, faux double treble in the beginning of this row by making a double crochet and a chain one and I'm going to go around this row and do my five increases and I will, sh whoops, I'm supposed to be doing double trebles. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm going to go around this row and do my double trebles and I'm gonna do my five increases and spread them out still and then I'll show you what to do at the end of this row um, so that we have our, our slit going. Okay, so I have one double treble crochet left and depending on what row you're on, that's the one you'll have left. And then we're not going to slip stitch here because it's the beginning of the slit. So what we're going to do is chain one and turn our work like normal. And then we're just going to continue the rows um, like we have been doing. So now I'm on my double treble crochet row, my second one. So I already chained one and I'm going to start off this row with a faux double treble. So I'm just going to yarn over once and insert my hook, pull up a loop for a double crochet. And then I'm going to chain one more and keep going. So and I'm still going to do my increases. Um, so yeah, so basically when you're doing the slit, the only difference is not slip stitching on the opposite side when you reach it. Um, you're going to chain one on the single crochet rows, just chain one and continue single crocheting. On the double crochet rows, you're going to chain one and just do a double crochet and keep going. So it's essentially the same and I'm going to continue this pattern until I reach the skirt reaches right above my knee and then I'm going to start on the um, on the lace part. So I'll meet you there once you get your skirt long enough to your to above your knee and I'll show you what to do after that. Okay, so once your skirt reaches your knee you can go ahead and count and make sure you have um, a multiple of five in this last row that you did. So I went on ahead and counted and I have 280 stitches. I've been increasing by five, but you know with all these rows and all these stitches, um, you could be off a little bit. So go ahead and count and make sure you have a multiple of five. The lace that we're using um, uses a multiple of five plus one. So what I'm gonna do is, since I have 280, we need a multiple of five plus one. So I'm gonna make this row 281 and add one more stitch here. So now I have 281. So go back and double check and make sure you have a multiple of five plus one extra stitch. 
The name of this stitch is called Shells and Coral. So what we're gonna do is chain one and turn our work. We already chained one. So what we need to do is chain five. So we already chained one, so chain four more. One, two, three, four. And then we're gonna skip four chains, not counting this first stitch. So after this first stitch, we'll skip four. One, two, three, four. And do a single crochet in the fifth stitch. Okay, chain five, three, four, five, and then skip four chains. One, two, three, four, and in the fifth chain, go ahead and do a single crochet. So again, chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and then skip four chains, one, two, three, four, and in the fifth chain, put a single crochet. So again, chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and then skip four chains, one, two, three, four, and in the fifth chain, do a single crochet. So this is all we're doing in this row, is just chaining five and skipping four chains and then crocheting into that fifth chain. So I will meet you at the end of this row and show you what's after that. Okay, so I'm at the end of this row and I have one, two, three, four, I thought I had five left, one, two, three, four, oh, five with my crochet there. So I'm going to chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm going to single crochet into this last stitch, which happens to be a, a chain space, actually. And if you're off, don't worry about it. Nobody's going to walk up to your skirt and say, oh my God, there's three here. So if you're off, just go ahead and make it the best you can. It's, it's not going to actually change your stitching as we move forward with the lace. Okay, so from here, we're going to chain one and turn our work. And then what we're going to do first is we're gonna put a double crochet in this first chain space. So go ahead and put a double crochet there. And then we're gonna chain two, one, two. And we're gonna put a single crochet in the middle chain space. So one, two, this is the third one. One, two, three, four, five. So this is the middle one. So we're gonna put a single crochet into that middle chain space there. Okay. And then next we're putting four double crochets into this single crochet space. So put four double crochets into the same chain space here. Three and four. Like that, and then we're gonna um, put a single crochet into the next middle chain space. So one, two, three, into the third chain space. There is a single crochet. Next, we're going to go ahead and chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Chain five, and then we're going to single crochet into the next loop and skip this uh, single crochet here. And we're going to single crochet into that middle, the third chain space with a single crochet. Okay. And then after that, we're going to put 
four double crochets into the next chain space. So it's one, two, three, and four. And now we're going to uh, single crochet into the middle chain of the next five chains. One, two, three. And then we're gonna do, um, next we're gonna chain five, like we did back here. One, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna single crochet into the third chain space of the next little loop here. With a single crochet. And then next we're going to put four double crochets into the next single crochet. Two, three, and four, and then we're going to single crochet into the middle chain of the next loop here, the third chain space, and then we're going to chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and then we're gonna put a single crochet into the next middle chain space of the next loop. And then we're going to do four more double crochets in the next single crochet. So this pattern is going to continue. Basically, it's it's every other every other single crochet space here is going to get either the five loops or five chains above it, or it's going to get um, four double crochets. So continue this pattern until the end of the row, and I'll show you how to finish the row. Okay, so now I'm almost at the end of the row. I have a um, a shell stitch here, so I'm going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And you can also speed up this stitch by not trying to find the middle third chain space. You can just put a single crochet there if you want. It, it's not going to move around. It'll stay fairly in the middle as we keep going. So that'll kind of speed it up for you. So the end of your row is going to depend on which stitch you were on. Were you on this shell stitch or were you on this coral part? So if you're like me on the coral part, after you do your single crochet into the row, the little space below, the way to finish off your row is to just put three double crochets into this last chain space. One, two, and three. So that's how you would finish the row in this case. If, let's pretend this is my last chain space here, and I'm ending off with Let's just pretend that's the last chain space for the row. Let's get that out of the way. Because everybody's going to have different lengths, so this might end up, or a different amount of chains, so it might end up on this um, shell being the last. So if the shell is your last, after you put your single crochet into that chain space, you're going to chain two, and then you're going to put a double crochet into 
the last chain space there. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and quickly finish my row. One, two, three, four, five. But I just wanted to show you both ways to end the row um, because people are gonna have different amounts of stitches depending on how long they made it. So next, what we're gonna do is chain one and turn our work. No matter which, uh, which way that you ended up, this row is gonna be the same for everyone. So this row is gonna be really similar to the very first row. All we're doing in the first stitch is a single crochet. And then we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to single crochet into the middle of, you can count the chain or you can just go in and put a single crochet in the middle. And then we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And when you get to the shells, you're just gonna, there's four shells, so you're just gonna find that space in between. I mean, there's four double crochets, so you'll find that space in between. We're not gonna go into like the stitchy part. We're gonna go into in between the four and then make a single crochet and then chain five. Three, four, five. And then single crochet into the middle of the coral space. And then chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to single crochet in between the shell, right in the middle. And this pattern is going to continue for the rest of this row. One, two, three, four, five. So it's just like the first row. We're chaining five and we're single crocheting in the middle of the shell or in the middle of the coral space. I'll meet you at the end of this row and show you what's after that. Okay, so I'm almost finished with this row. And I just have five more chains left. One, two, three, four, five. And then to finish this row, I'm gonna find the last chain space and do a single crochet. And that's how we end that row. From here, you're gonna look at, um, so we know that this previous row was every other stitch or every other group was a shell, a coral, a shell. For this row, we're gonna do a coral, a shell where there's a coral. So it's gonna like reverse so that it's kind of like a different, every other pattern in the next row. And so what we're gonna do next is chain one and turn our work. And to start off this row, <clears throat> we're going to put um, three double crochets into this first chain space. So, whoops, go through both. There we go. Three double crochets. One, two, three. And then we're going to single crochet into the middle of this coral. I know it's not called a coral, I'm just gonna call it that. And so you can see this is like a halfway shell. I mean, it's only got three and not four. And then from here, we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to single crochet into the next coral. So on top of the shell of the previous two rows down, on top of that shell is a coral. And then 
After we single crochet there, we're going to go ahead and put four double crochets into the next single crochet of the previous row. One, two, three, four, and then we're going to go ahead and um, single crochet into this next coral space. Sorry, my dress keeps falling down. It's so heavy. <laughs> Trying to keep it in frame. It keeps slipping. And so you can see it'll be every other, every other one, just like it has been. So we'll continue. Chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to single crochet into the next coral space. And now we're going to put four double crochets into the next single crochet. One, two, three, and four. And then we're going to single crochet into the next coral space. Then go ahead and chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to single crochet into the next coral space. And then we're going to go ahead and do four double crochets into the next single crochet of the row below. So that's one, two, three, four, and then single crochet. So this pattern continues until the end of the row and you can see how it's starting to be this coral and shell and coral stitch. So go ahead and finish the row and I'll show you one more time how to finish the row um, for both ways because some people might have end up on a shell or a coral. So I'll show you one more time at the end of this row how to finish the row and then um, and I'll meet you there. All right, so this time I am ending up with a shell as my last, um, right before I end this row. So I'm going to go ahead and single crochet, and then I'm going to chain two, and then I'm going to put a um, double crochet in the in the first chain space here. So that I just wanted to show you how the end of the other row looks. So. If you have the coral before, you're going to end up with three double crochets when you're in your row. And if you end up with a shell before, then you're just going to chain two after you do your single crochet, chain two, and then put one double crochet. And from there, we're going to go back to um, chaining one and turning our work. We're going to go back to the row we did before, which is first a single crochet and then chaining five. One, two, three, four, five. And then just finding the middle of the shell and doing a single crochet or four, five finding the middle of the coral and doing a single crochet. So this is pretty much the pattern for the lace. Um, so you can make this part as long as you want your skirt to be. It doesn't have to be super long. Um, or you can make it into a full on maxi. So continue this uh, lace pattern until you get the length that you want and then I'll show you how to do the border.
Okay, so once you get your skirt long enough with the lace, um, <clears throat> the next thing we're gonna do is start on our border. So if you ended up on a row that has the shells in it and not just the coral holes, then we're gonna do one more row of those. So uh, that row was just the chaining five and then single crocheting across. If you ended up on that row, good, good job because that's where we were going. So go ahead and do one row, one more row of just the corals by chaining five and then single crocheting into the middle of the coral or the shell. And once you have this row complete, I'll show you what's after that. Okay, so once you finish uh, your last row with, um, with the corals only, we're going to continue this up the slit. So this is the bottom side and I'm going to turn it so that I can go up the side of the rows now. And I'm going to go up the rows the same way. I'm going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm just going to try to match how long that is. Maybe here. I'm just going to guess and um, then single crochet. So I'm going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then just guess where I want to put the single crochet. Just try your best to make it um, a nice distance like the rest of them. Just keep going like this um, up your slit until you reach the middle. I'll show you how to do the middle. Okay, so I've gone up the side of my slit with that chain five and single crochet in between. And so when you get to the middle, one, two, three, some of these came out. Four. Okay, so when you get to the middle of your slit here, you're just going to try to make it kind of even as you can. You can go back and adjust the last two to kind of break that up, but mine's kind of worked out pretty good. So I'm just going to go straight into this middle chain space in between the opening. Well, I guess there is no middle chain space. I'm just going to pick one of them, though, and go in. And then do a single crochet. And since mine has two little chain spaces here in the middle, so I'm going to put one more single crochet here just to make it even. And then I'm going to... <clears throat> Sorry, this thing is so big. There we go. Then I'm going to um, go back down the other side with the same. So it's pretty simple. I'm just going to chain five. 
and go back down this other side. And um, I'll show you what's next when we reach the bottom corner because that's where we began doing this stitch. And I'll show you this after that. Okay, so I have one left. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm gonna find that corner stitch and single crochet. Actually, slip stitch, that's too big. And slip stitch. Yeah, I like that better, whoops. Okay, so from here to go ahead and finish our border, we're going to turn it back alongside the bottom. We're going to continue in the same direction. Um, so continue in the direction, find out which side is your front side, and make sure you're crocheting on that side. Um, <clears throat> and I am on my right side. So what I'm going to do next is when I come up to the next loop I'm always going to do one single crochet then I'm gonna do two double um, half double crochets one and two and then I'm gonna do a single crochet and then when I get to the single crochet from the row below I'm going to slip stitch in there slip stitch. So that's pretty much the rest of the border there. So again we're going to do one single crochet in the next loop and then two half double crochets so yarn over and pull through all three and then another single crochet and then a slip stitch in the single crochet below. So it just gives you a thicker um, loop there. Okay, so again, that's one single crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull through all three for a half double crochet, two half double crochets, and a single crochet and then slip stitch into oops, into the single crochet space okay so continue this pattern of one single crochet two half double crochets one single crochet and a slip stitch into that single crochet below. Continue that pattern until you reach the end of the row and I will... Okay, so I just reached the corner. I have a single crochet left in this loop. And the corner is simple. We're just going to do like we've been doing and slip stitch here. And then we're going to go ahead and turn so facing the right way. But <clears throat> we're going to do the same thing. So it's just a single crochet. There's nothing special about turning this corner here. Oops, I'm out of water frame. So I just did a single crochet and a half double and then another half double. So just continue this pattern until you reach the middle of the slit and I'll show you what to do there. So I'm just about at the middle of my slit here and it's no different from, um, sorry my string is all over the place. <laughs> it's no different from the corner kind of. So I did what a half double, so I have a half double and a single crochet. And then all I'm gonna do is pick one of these two and slip stitch into it probably the second one and from there I'm just going to continue with my um, 
single crochet, two half doubles, and a single. So I will meet you at the end and show you what to do next. Okay, so I'm on my last loop. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish with a single crochet, two half double crochets, one, one more single crochet, and then I'm gonna slip stitch into this corner. After you slip stitch, go ahead and chain one, and then you can go ahead and tie off. So the last thing that we need to do is, if you want to keep this as a skirt, um, we need to create a drawstring for the inside of the skirt so that it could stay up. So what you want to do is just make a regular chain long enough to go over, around your, um, your natural waist and then it has to be that long plus long enough for you to tie. Um, so go ahead and make a chain. You can measure your natural waist or just measure this up against yourself as you go. So go ahead and make a slip knot and start chaining out your chains until it's long enough to go around your waist and be able to be tied. So once your chain is long enough, to fit around your natural waist and still have some string left over for your tie, go ahead and um, just cut your work and pull and tie off. So now I'm going to grab my G hook and turn my skirt inside out, make sure it's on the inside so that your string is kind of hidden. And what you want to do is just weave your string through. So we need to find out what the front, what the center front is. And so you're going to have to figure out where you want your slit to be, like which leg, what side, if you want it in the middle. Um, figure out where you want your slit to be and then find that middle middle area and then you can just kind of eyeball it and mark where you want your middle area to be and then we're going to weave this string through Let me turn this upside down so it's a little bit easier to see okay so this is my center so I'm going to start by weaving in the string kind of close to it. And by the way, I made my string 200 chains long with the with the J hook. So that's just how much I did, but I'm like a, in between a size medium and a size large. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna pick, try to make it e equidistant and on the same, in the same row, but I'm just gonna pick little one chains spots and then I'm going to weave my string all the way around. And this will help the skirt stay up because it should be much bigger than your natural waist, but that's just so it could be gathered and more full. But yeah, just keep weaving your string all the way around on the inside and then you are finished. Thank you so much for watching. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to turn this skirt into the full dress. So I'll see you there.